I don't know about you, but I always struggle with cravings and bloating that time of month and just feel a little off when I get my period. This is something that's been a challenge for me for a very long time, and I recently started taking Hormone Harmony to manage my PMS, and it really supports my hormonal balance and regulation. I feel like since I've been using it, my sleep quality has improved, and it's relieved some of my mood swings. And the biggest benefit? Feeling like myself again. That's what women mention over and over in their reviews. And there are 17,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. Women cannot stop talking about it on social media. Literally, a bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. Happy Mammoth, the company that created Hormone Harmony, is dedicated to making women's lives easier. It has zero sugar and it's gluten-free, dairy-free, non-GMO, and third-party tested. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code DATABLE at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use the code DATABLE for 15% off today. Guys, when I found out that Artifact Uprising was going to be one of our sponsors, I lost my mind because I've literally done all my holiday shopping through them for the last couple of years, and the gifts are always a massive hit. Artifact Uprising is a Colorado-based company that sells premium quality, customizable photo goods for your digital photos. They want to help you preserve your meaningful moments this holiday season. Whether you want to say I love you with the perfect gift, display favorite memories in your home, or connect with loved ones throughout the year, they have a product you can personalize. I've got in photo books, calendars, and scrapbooks, and they are always simply beautiful and always a hit because of how personalized they feel. Like I mentioned, I've gotten many gifts over the years, but I kind of wanted my own photo book about having that physical memento to put in your home. I decided to make a photo book of me and my partner's first year together, and we have just so many photos, but it was easy to go through them, and the book came out beautifully. And who knows, maybe one day we can share it with our future children to show them how young and crazy their parents parents once were. Artifact Uprising makes it easy to tell your story. Through the end of the year, dateable listeners can give Artifact Uprising a try and get 20% off for new customers or 15% off if you purchased before. Just visit artifactuprising.com and use the code dateable through December 31st. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating insiders. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to Dateable. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Brunch Talk. I am so hungry for another great dating question. You are hungry now? Can't get enough. (laughs) Are you all hungry at home, too, for some dating conundrums that we're going to get to the bottom of and try to (laughs) give some perspective to? We've spoken to thousands of daters, so we've seen almost every configuration, every scenario there is. For you all to know that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. And also whatever you're going through, we have a framework for you to think about so that you can find your way out of the conundrum. Honestly, when we started Dateable, I feel like one of the biggest aha moments for me was I'm not the only one dealing with this. So I think for so long, like before podcasts were readily available, like you were kind of in your own silo. Yeah. And I was like around all these like friends that had figured it out. And I'm just like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I get a third date? So I'm really glad that we're able to normalize a lot of these questions. And we're going to normalize this question because we know for sure you're not alone in what you're going through. The question is, should I wait for someone who is currently working through some stuff? And for more context, my boyfriend broke up with me due to mental health slash getting his shit together. Ideally, he would like to come back when he is better, but the pressure of waiting is a lot. I want him to come back so bad, but there's a lot of healing that needs to be done. I'm really struggling to move on, though, because the breakup wasn't due to lack of love. Should I wait for him? Or if not, how can I let this go? I'm trying so hard, but it feels impossible. This is probably one of the toughest breakup scenarios there is because it's not lack of feelings. It's not something that's out of your control. It's not lack of connection. It's purely due to environmental factors, mental health, or someone's current schedule or 
they're working through ailing parents and they're helping out friends or there's so many different ways for someone to be pulled away from a relationship that has nothing to do with you. They still want to be with you and it's heartbreaking. So I totally understand why this listener is really conflicted about this. I mean, I was here yeah. for like five years, so I get it. Like I was in a very similar situation. And this listener did actually reach out on Instagram knowing that I had been in mm -hmm. a similar situation. And I think I took the path of waiting and it was subconscious to some degree. Like I really believe that this person was the one. Yes. And we just needed to get through this issue. They needed to deal with their own stuff and then we could be together. And like I accepted a breakup, but it was like this on again, off again situation. And I was like dating other people, but they were always there at the back of my minds. It just really prevented me from moving forward. So my take on this as someone that did wait, I would not recommend waiting. I think if they are going to deal with all their stuff, like the time will come if it's meant to be. And I know that sounds so like vague. But I really believe that. And I think, too, getting away from like that situation now, I saw that there were more compatibilities than just the mental health thing. And I think had I not moved forward, I wouldn't have realized, too, that like building a committed relationship is already really hard with someone that wants to be all in and fully invested because you know, you're just taking two different people, mindsets, the way they process information in the world. Relationships are hard, as we've talked about on different dateable episodes, including the one that we aired recently with Todd Baratz. And I think it's an uphill battle to do this with someone that's already not all in. I'm glad you can offer that perspective because you are shedding light on what happens if you do wait. And yeah, maybe some people don't want to hear that, right? You probably wouldn't have wanted to hear that when you were no. all in <laughs> on the waiting. So obviously, our listener, you decide what you want to do. And you probably already have a very strong idea of what you want to do. You know what the answer is, but you have a strong idea of what you want to do. But here's a way to look at this that I think is very much related to what Julie was saying, is when you are waiting for someone to make these changes or for their situation to change. What are you giving up? They may be working on something. They are progressing, hopefully. What are you doing? Are you putting your life on pause? Are you sitting back waiting for this person? Are you going on dates just to fill time in order to wait for this person to come back? Are you sacrificing in this waiting period? Most of the time, I would say probably yes. You are sacrificing your life. You're sacrificing your own progression. Also, when you wait for someone to work on their own shit, when they do come back, if they come back, they are a different person. So I would say there is no such thing as waiting. You're not waiting for the same person to come back. So if they are to come back to you after they've worked on their stuff, they're coming back as a new person and your relationship is a new relationship. So therefore, that relationship needs to start over the entire process, like from the beginning of like the courtship and the dating. It, it can't pick back up where you left off. Right. That's what I'm saying. That can never happen. Like the Kylie and Mark Groves relationship 2.0 that we've had a few episodes on. Yes. I think the waiting thing is so interesting because like I feel like in the moment I didn't necessarily feel like I was waiting because I was like mm -hmm. moving on with life. I mean, there was a period I was severely depressed, but that's not the point. But I think there was a period that I was... <laughs> she says with a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, hello. I mean, like, let's not diminish that's that, true. though. You that's went true. through a lot where you took yourself out of the dating market because you were not consciously waiting, but you paused your life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Thank you for reeling that back in, because I think that is important. But I think what I'm saying, too, is like, even if you are moving on and dating, if you are occupying space or the belief that this person is the one, you are still waiting. Yes. Because it is near impossible to form a deeper connection. I think I went into dates thinking, can I meet someone that I like better than my ex? Like, can I like move yes. forward that way? Opposed to just being like, I'm going to like put that in the past and move forward and meet people who they are. 
if you're going into dates comparing them to someone else, that is not a setup for success scenario in any way. No, it's not fair for the other person either. That's just like, no. you don't want to put people in that situation. So what are some ways that you can tackle this? If you don't want to give up this person, there are some guidelines you can set up for this quote unquote waiting period. I truly believe in the no contact rule. Like you got to work on your own shit. I can't be there to support you. And I think something that you suffered through, Julie, was that you felt like bad for this person. So you wanted to be there for them, even during a period of not being together. And that's so much emotional burden on you to take on. A hundred percent. And I think, though, too, the no contact is important. But I did no contact. But in my mind, I was like, oh, 30 days. He'll be back after that. Yeah. You can't have that mental. It has to be no contact. So I can move on with my life. I think that yes. is the shift. I want to go into that shift a lot more. But before we do, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. Ah, I love my shower time. See, I'm an evening shower because I like to wash off the day before I hop into bed. And now with Osea's new Andaria Algae Body Wash, my shower routine has turned into a tropical paradise with its iconic all-natural uplifting citrusy scent. This body wash infuses your shower with the healing power of the sea, formulated with nourishing, nutrient-rich Andaria seaweed, glycerin, and an oil blend. Also, its pH balance, hydrating formula doesn't strip skin, leaving it feeling soft and renewed. I'm personally a big fan of the gel-like texture. It just feels really nice in my hands and it's beautiful, rich lather. And the all-natural citrusy scent that smells so vibrant, you just feel like you just went, I don't know, surfing? Even I don't surf at all. It leaves my skin feeling so wonderful and can I just even say glamorous? Upgrade your shower with clean, vegan face and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code Dateable at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. You may have heard me mention in our newsletter that I'm in the process of planning a trip to Italy, and I don't want to be that American tourist that doesn't know any Italian. What better way than to use Rosetta Stone, the most trusted learning program available on desktop or as an app that truly immerses you in the language you want to learn? Rosetta Stone is the trusted expert for 30 years and millions of users with 25 languages offered. The whole process just feels intuitive, like you're picking up the language naturally first with words, then first phrases, and then sentences. Their true accent feature even gives you feedback on your pronunciation, something I may even need sometimes in English. This is an absolute steal right now. With 50% off, your lifetime membership includes all 25 languages, so you have this for any and all trips you need in life. So don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. Datable listeners get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com com slash today. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash today today. We're officially entering fall, and I don't know about you, but this is by far my favorite season. Between pumpkin spice lattes and sweater weather, ah, oh, it's the best. And Quince makes it easy to shift my wardrobe from summer to fall with high-quality items that don't blow my budget. I'm obsessed with the tan cashmere sweater I got from them. It's one of their signature items, and it's just so soft and luxurious. And $50! That's unheard of for cashmere, and the quality is to the same level of luxury brands that cost a heck lot more. All all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And that's because Quince partners directly with top factories cutting out the cost to the middleman and passes the savings on to us. Make switching season a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash datable for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash datable to get free shipping and 365 five day returns quince.com slash datable the shift that i've learned years later is how do you put yourself at the center of dating because like you were saying i was still catering to this other person and actually reflecting on that relationship all these years later 
my needs were so suppressed in that relationship Mm -hmm. because they had so many needs of, you know, all the things that needed to get figured out. So I think what I would do for this person is really think about what do you want in a relationship? Not this person, just in general. What are the feelings you want in a relationship? What are the day-to-day activities? How do you want to celebrate occasions? Like all the, you know, wildest things that you want to create what an ideal relationship looks like for you and then really take inventory and take this person off the pedestal, right? Like, are they actually doing this? Are you just caught up in this feeling of love? Because ultimately, if they can't meet your needs, then like, how are you going to be in a full-blown relationship with them? Like, I hate saying this, but like, I feel like every year around my birthday, we were like conveniently off Uh. my ex and I, and I never got anything from him, like zero. Mm. And I'm like, not even like a text on my birthday sometimes. That's nuts. Like thinking about that, I'm like, that is not the relationship I wanted, but I excused it because I was like, oh, he's going through his own stuff, Uh you know, like all that. And it's like, if I really thought about like, what do I want in a relationship? I want the guy that's planning my birthday dinner and taking me out. And this is a huge priority for them, which is my current partner. And you know, like I really believe I would have met someone like my current partner years earlier had I not been holding on to my ex. I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Everything still works out for a reason. But I really believe that was the downfall of why I met someone a little later in life. And again, just really revealing the other side of this scenario, which is like, and Mark Groves talked about this too, when you have the person in a relationship who's quote unquote, the broken one, the one that's working on shit, they lean into that identity even more in a relationship. So then the entire relationship caters to the broken one. Yes. The one who is not broken has to suppress their needs, has to cater, has to sacrifice. And then that's going to build up so much resentment because at some point you're going to realize, what have I been doing for myself and what has this relationship done for me? And part of what you're saying, Julie, is such a loud statement is, What do you need, listener? What do you want in a relationship? Everything, this entire question is about the other person. What do you need in a relationship? The answer is not, do you want this person? No, it's not a person thing. What do you want and what do you need in a relationship? And is this person able to fulfill that for you? It doesn't sound like they're able to. No. If you are at a crossroads right now, ask yourself this question. What would I do right now if I prioritize myself? What is the action I would take right now if I prioritize myself? I also feel like if this person does come back in your life, and I'm always like hesitant to say this because I don't want to like give that hope. Looking at like the Mark Groves and Kylie situation, they really did take that time apart to work through their own stuff. And I remember Mark saying this on the episode, like he wasn't attached to it being Kylie yes. as his next partner. Yes. He was attached to who would be the right partner for him. And it so happened to be Kylie. So if this person comes back, they can devote the time to you, they can commit to a relationship, then that is a different scenario. But you're not going to lose something. Like, I think I have this fear, like, if I don't hold on a little, it'll, like, work out with someone else. No. I can assure you that's not the case. (laughs) No. It's not the case. I have many proof points that that is not the case from multiple different partners that, like, were not able to be all in. And I think another piece, too, I realized, because this was a pattern for me, I don't think it was to the extreme of this last relationship, but, like, I always pick these people that weren't fully committed, that weren't fully Mm. all in. So I could be like, that's the reason why the relationship isn't working Mm. out instead of looking at my own stuff. And I'm really grateful for this relationship because it's what got me to therapy. And honestly, I don't even know if I would have done this podcast had it not been for them because I think there you go. the levels of insightfulness grew from this experience. So it can be a gift if you use it, but like, how do you just keep yourself at the forefront and kind of like have the confidence to like let whatever's going to play out, play out? Yes. Give yourself some grace because the number of people I've told to not wait and who ended up waiting 
It's probably like 90 percent of the people I've talked to because you already know. You already know what I you're going to do. So you got to come on your own time, too. You do. You do. Like we can tell you, you know exactly what the quote unquote right thing to do. You know what we're going to tell you to do, but you're already going to do what you're going to do. So you have to be prepared for what's in store and then also take it as a learning opportunity. The heartbreak that's going to come with waiting. Yeah. Use that opportunity to expand your your heart. I think like just taking this person off the pedestal though is really important because yes, I feel like you can get so caught in this definitely happened to me as someone that has a vivid imagination too. You kind of forget all the bad things and yes. you like only remember the good about the relationship and the feelings of, you know, happiness and excitement and all the highs and you forget the lows. Yes. Like when I was replaying this relationship, I wasn't thinking about my birthday. I was thinking about like the amazing dates and times we had together and moments and how this person was the one. And then, yeah, like once they fixed all their stuff, then of course the other stuff would come, <laughs> but that's not true, right? Like people show up the way that they are. And I think like looking back on my situation years later too is, yes, it was my mental health stuff. I don't want to say it wasn't. But at the end of the day, people commit to what they want to commit to. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean there's something flawed with you. Like, I think my ex just could not commit. Like, I really don't think he could. Mm -hmm. He was in the place to commit to the type of relationship I wanted and knew that. So your ex might be the same. But looking back, it's a commitment thing. Like, mm -hmm. I want someone that's all in that's committed to a relationship that can meet my needs, and I can meet theirs. And like, how can you reframe that? And I think that will at least intellectualize it. It's not going to like remove the feelings necessarily. Oh, yeah. Nothing's going to remove the feelings except for time. Oh, time. Time does. Yes. Time will do the trick. But in the meantime, yes, be nice, be kind to yourself. Ask what do you need in this process? Prioritize your needs. And also just know this is all going to be a great learning opportunity as hindsight is 2020. And you'll be telling a story like Julie one day. And I think <laughs> actually, like the one thing I'll say too, of how it can help you into your search for love, is that it showed me the qualities that I wasn't emphasizing before. I've said this before, consistency, mm. because my partner, my ex was not consistent at all. It was so different day to day. Yes. And I think that became something that I looked at in the core of what I wanted. And of course, there were many other things too. It wasn't just that. But I really believe like without consistency, you can't build a long-term committed relationship. Like that is the baseline. So it made looking for that in my next partner, the baseline. Like, of course, if they were consistent and nothing else, then I wouldn't date them. But if they were consistent, then at least I could point. expand to get to know them and see if it was the right fit. Yeah. Well, thanks for this question. For our listeners, you can email us your questions. Hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast, or you can leave us a rating and review. This is the best option, by the way. So listen up. In <laughs> Apple Podcasts, give us five stars in the body of your review. Ask us a question there. And if you pre ordered our book, How to Be Dateable, coming out in January 2025, then we will bump up your question to the top of the list. So we'll answer it next week, you know, as early as next week. That's how fast we go. And make sure to subscribe so you get all of our long form content as well. And a quickie when we drop them. All right. See you all next week. Bye. 